Now we will have a look at whether design managers are also designers. Does a design manager design? This comes up on building sites and in project offices all the time. The design manager might be introduced or referred to as the designer, or even encouraged to sketch up design options by their line manager. Should we be doing this, or do we just facilitate the design process? To start, we can take another look at this slide, which was in an earlier module, and shows the extent of the design team. This includes all the architects, engineers, interior designers, landscapers, and other experts, such as facade engineers and temporary works engineers, as well as the specialist subcontractors who produce designs, such as fire sprinkler installers and kitchen contractors. These are also all design managers, actually, as they manage their own design and often coordinate with other disciplines. And some design practices and studios recruit design managers who also perhaps design. But that is okay, as they are working for a company which is covered by professional indemnity insurance and promotes itself as a design company or professional designer. But looking at this list, we might wonder why clients, investors, main contractors, project managers and even quantity surveyors are also on the list. This is a very important question to ask, particularly regarding risk and design liability. It is imperative to understand how the construction industry defines the designer. Any person or organisation is considered to be a designer if they prepare drawings, calculations and specifications. But also anyone who makes an amendment to those drawings and specifications and calculations. This could be any one of the decision makers, for example, a construction project manager or a quantity surveyor who dictates specifications and might enforce their own preferred details. And in doing so, they take on the design liability for that revised specification or that new detail. Whoever makes decisions which affects the design assumes the design risk for that item, particularly and this is important, particularly if it is not agreed by the original professional designer. So any sketches done by a design manager, or specifications produced by the supply chain, or amendments made in the Bill of Quantities, ought to be directed back to the professional design consultants for their comments, and hopefully their incorporation into the overall master design. For example, if a builder moves a rainwater pipe on site and that location differs from the architect's layout drawings and one day, say, a damaged and leaking roof ends up in court, the contractor will likely be found liable for any fault as it was not built in accordance with the approved drawings. However, contractor-led developments and design-build contractors are responsible for the design as well as the construction. So their project and site team managers should be able to design and make changes, right? No, they appoint people who are trained as competent design professionals who carry insurance and can provide a collateral warranty. These are members of their own supply chain who are subcontractors who produce design information as part of their fabrication and installation agreement. And of course, architects and engineers and other professional designers who are appointed by that main contractor produce design information and they also comment on any drawings and specifications produced by those subcontractors. But despite this, some people working for developers and contractors do make decisions which are in fact design decisions and could be risky. Let's have a look at a practical example. This is a plan view of an apartment in London. Now usually houses and apartments in the United Kingdom are laid out with a separate route or corridor for the bedrooms to link up to and run out of the main front door. And this provides 
a safe route in the case of a fire because the entire route is a protected single compartment. However, in this particular case, the floor area was just too tight to allow for that. There wasn't enough space. And the occupants, say, in the furthest bedroom, bedroom number two, for example, had to run into the dining area and then through a second door and finally into the protected lobby. And this solution was agreed between the architects and the fire engineers and eventually approved by building control and signed off by the London Fire Brigade. However, when the building was approaching practical completion and the apartments were full of tradesmen and tilers, painters and decorators, and the client's sales team had a request to make a seemingly small and innocuous change to the kitchen layout. They had wanted to swap the cooker, highlighted in yellow, with the location of the sink, here in blue. And the plumber, who was working on site, told the block manager it could be done without any extra cost. And because it wasn't going to delay things either and seemed to be a small change, the site manager gave the go-ahead. However, the location of the cooker had been intentionally placed as far as possible away from the open plan fire route. The legal requirements for Part B dictate that a cooker, which happens to be the highest risk area for any apartment, was to be a minimum of 1.8 meters away from the fire escape route. In this case, the sales manager for the clients, or the site foreman, should have asked the design manager if it was feasible. They would have immediately been able to say no, or at least take the proposal back to the design team before deciding against the change. So to summarise, we can say that anyone who produces a design should be able to provide their employer, even if they are working for a contractor, with number one, a professional indemnity insurance, and number two, a collateral warranty. Any change to a material selection or a new buildability option by an investor or contractor must be reviewed and commented on by the relevant professional designer and to be approved by the client as per the terms of their contract. And although not always possible, if it affects the original master design, the drawing specifications and calculations should be amended. Thank you very much for watching and listening. This brings us to the end of this short module.